Good morning and welcome to In-House Publishing's Authors' Corner. Today we have a wonderful new author in here with us and his name is Chris Dalton and he's what, written this book which is called From Terra Nullis to Beloved Companion. Good morning, Chris. How are you going? Oh, good thanks, Christy. Really pleased to be here. Thank you. So, Chris, what inspired you to write this book? Was there any crucial events that happened? Yes, there were. Um, two or three. The first was a seminar that I went to where somebody spoke about coal seam gas and what the church's response should be to a debate that was getting very polarised within the community. And I came away from that seminar feeling rather disappointed uh, because I felt there was quite a lot missing. All it seemed to do was say we need to be rational, we need to be objective, we need to be informed, and then we can work out the solution. And I felt something was missing in that. Friends of mine said, well, if you're critical, you put up or you shut up. So I put up and I started doing my research. Part of that research was going on a spirit journey to Central Australia to experience the land. As part of that journey, I came across this sculpture of a lady, which is on the cover of the book. And the environment is painted on her skin. And the story the artist told me of the uh, origins of that sculpture were that she was a lady who lived in the bush, in the outback, in love with the environment, and she'd received a cancer diagnosis. And her dilemma was, should she stay in the outback or should you go to the capital city to get treatment? And she didn't know what to do. And I interpreted that sculpture as land. This is Mother Earth, contemplating whether coal seam gas mining was a cancer in her womb, and what should she do about it? So I found that sculpture very meaningful. It spoke to me. Three months after seeing that sculpture, my wife was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. And you can imagine the sort of um, responses I had to that. I responded rationally. I responded emotionally with my heart. And then I looked at myself and I thought, well, if I respond this way to my wife, should I be responding in a similar way to the land if I love the land? And so it set me on a whole new course of thinking that I shouldn't just think about the land in terms of what I can get from the land. It can provide me housing. It can provide me food can provide me minerals, it can give me a place of spiritual retreat. But I shouldn't just look at land in terms of utility. Maybe I should respond to land in terms of a relationship. And so those were very powerful experiences for me that, that shaped the way I pursued my research and the conclusions I reached. Chris, listening to that story, I mm -hmm. can detect the passion and it must have been one experience for you to go through. And it was one that I couldn't ignore, that it spoke to me. After reading your foreword, you raised some points about non-academic influence on changing your thought patterns. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Absolutely right, Christy. Um, my training at school, at university, was in the sciences, in physics, in mathematics. And it led me down the path of being very logical, being very rational, I had a long career in public service, providing policy advice to ministers, which had to be objective, it had to be informed, it had to be logical, it had to be independent, it had to be neutral. And so this was my schooling. So when I came to research the area of coal seam gas mining and the polarised debate within the community, I assumed it was just a matter of collecting all the relevant facts, analysing them and coming up with some conclusions. That didn't actually happen. I was totally taken by surprise because during the five years in which I conducted this research, I found it was the poets who were speaking to me. I found it was the artists. I found it was my own experience of land that was more powerfully informing me in terms of the direction that I took with this book. That's not discounting all the facts, all the science, all the informed study that's being done, but they need to work alongside each other and work with each other for us to develop a, a more comprehensive approach to how we manage coal seam gas. There are a lot of notable people that have read this book and given you reviews. Was there anyone that particularly stood out for you as a surprise? Yes, one particular comment I appreciated very much was from Dr John Williams, who is a founding member of the Wentworth Group of Concerned Scientists, and he has done 
uh, his own very significant investigation into coal seam gas. He was very positive about the walk and I was very encouraged by that. How has your manuscript been accepted amongst your peers and also the church? I have been really pleased because I think what I'm saying is a little at the margins, is a little difficult, a bit different, it's, it's not mainstream. And before deciding definitely to go ahead with publication, I thought I'd better test it out on a number of people. So I went to my supervisor, Dean Drayton, who used to be president of the Uniting Church in Australia, and he was very positive about the book. I went to a couple of international theologians, very positive about the, the book, one from America, one from South Africa. I then went locally within Brisbane to the Australian Earth Laws Alliance, and the convener of that group, Michelle Maloney, was very positive about what I was saying. And so I thought, here I have tested with objective, well-respected people the ideas that I got in the book, and they're all saying, go for it. All that gave me the confidence to think that, yes, it's worthwhile going ahead with this. Within the church, um, like anywhere, there's a very broad range of opinion, and some people will not identify that closely with what I say in the book. Others will identify very closely with it. So now, Chris, is there any up-and-coming events that we need to keep a watch out for where you'll be showing or perhaps speaking about the book? Yes, I have a book launch coming up on the 26th of March at Brookfield Centre for Christian Spirituality. I'm very fortunate that the chair of the Queensland Church's Environment Network is going to launch the book for me. That is an open event, so you're very welcome to come along to that if that is of interest to you. I'm also going to be speaking, probably, it is yet to be fully confirmed, at Emmanuel College, University of Queensland. They have regular lunchtime sessions on uh, faith and science and how the two mix together. And I expect to be speaking there about the book in July. So we thank Chris today for coming in and showing thank us you. his wonderful new book. This book's available to purchase, so if you check out the web websites on the bottom of the screen there, you can purchase from them, or you can go to Chris's book launch where you could get yourself a signed copy. I'd be very pleased to meet you and to sign a copy and to talk about the book. That is wonderful. So good luck with that book. Thank you. And until next time in Author's Corner, we will bid you farewell.